What up, cuts? It's your boy, The Hater. And it's time for a 25 Reasons video again. I didn't get to do one yesterday because I was feeling a little bit uh, under the weather. I think I smoked too many cigarettes. I need to really quit smoking cigarettes, you hear what I'm saying? But I feel great otherwise, but my voice was a little bit weird. So I decided to not do a video yesterday, but luckily I had a few saved up videos that I released yesterday up in this mug. So with that being said, let's get to today's video, which is 25 Reasons Why Samoan Wrestlers Suck. Now, immediately I can hear everyone thinking, what about The Rock and Roman? Obviously, I'm not talking about everyone. I'm talking about the concept of the Samoan wrestler, right? Because Samoans are very overrepresented in wrestling, which is a good thing because uh, why the fuck not, right? But they're also overrated. And that's actually reason one. Reason one why Samoans suck in wrestling is that they are overrated, motherfucks. The amount of mid-level Samoans that come out that we have to pretend are great wrestlers is insane, right? That's one thing about the, the current, like, landscape of the United States that I dislike the most. Is this, like, weird-ass pretending. You know what I mean? We have to fucking pretend. Like, they ask us to pretend a lot, motherfucks. Like, I have to pretend that Ice Spice is an attractive woman. You know what I mean? Like, we live in a world where people unironically say that Ice Spice is an attractive woman. And I'm like, this girl is like a three at best. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this girl was in my high school, I wouldn't even look at her once or twice because I think she's like 18 or whatever. Not once. I'd be like, the fuck? Get out of here. You know what I mean? I don't even talk to you at all, right? And we have to pretend that she's hot. That's just one example. Uh, likewise, in wrestling, we have to pretend that like Umaga is a legend. He fucking isn't a legend, motherfucks. He's not a legend. He's a guy who had like a three-week run as three-minute warning. Then he came back as a fat Samoa and did nothing. And then he passed away, rest in peace. You know, and all of a sudden he's like this Hall of Famer. Absolutely not, he's not a Hall of Famer. He's like on the level of like Bull Buchanan. Imagine if Bull Buchanan was introduced as the next, you know, like uh, inductee of the Hall of Fame. You'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Most of you are probably thinking, who the fuck is Bull Buchanan? Exactly, I rest my case, cucks. Reason number two, they are entitled, right? The Samoans are entitled. Every mini little documentary that I've seen, like I saw one on Yokozuna, and it was like a bunch of Samoans, most of whom are dead now, rest in peace, all of y'alls, including Sika, who I think passed away like yesterday, rest in peace, you know what I'm saying, I love the Samoans, I love the Samoan people, it's just the wrestlers kind of annoy me, like all of them were like, we deserve more, we always get buried, we deserve more, why are we always treated like savages, we deserve more, Yokozuna finally got more, but we deserved even more, and it's like, enough man, Enough, like, what the fuck is wrong with this country, you know? Like, in this country, the, 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 another problem that I have with the, with the culture, aside from the fact that we have to pretend, is that we have to, like, tolerate people complaining every fucking day about how hard they had it, right? Let me tell, let me, let me say it one time, motherfucks, and I'm gonna do it with a quick little anecdote. If you complain, right, you're a bitch, all right? It's as simple as that. You're a bitch. I don't care what it is that you're complaining about. The rest of us don't have the energy and the bandwidth to deal with your problems. The rest of us have problems on our, of our own, right? So fucking take that shit that you're complaining about and deal with it yourself like a real man or a real woman, right? And all I see in these documentaries is, oh, this didn't happen how I wanted. Oh, me and Afa didn't get a push. Oh, Rikishi should have been champion. No, he shouldn't have. Stop bitching and moaning, right? And all they do is talk about how entitled they are. And I'm fucking sick of it, motherfucks. Reason number three, going along the same lines. They are presented as being tougher than anyone for absolutely no reason. Now, once again, I love the Samoans. I can't emphasize this enough. I have met a handful of them in my life. I'm not going to sit here and say I've met hundreds. I've met like three, maybe four. But all of them have been really nice. In addition, I've met a bunch of other people who are Polynesian or from the islands, and they're all very nice. What they aren't is these pretend tough guys that you get in WWE, right? They don't walk around being like, yeah, we're a warrior culture. Like, every fucking person is a warrior culture. Like, honestly, how often do you hear that? I was saying out my buddy last week. This is one of my best friends in the world. He's from a Latin American country. I, won't, I don't want to put it out there in case he finds this video and thinks I'm talking about him. You know, but I love him dearly. He's one of my best friends, right? And he was telling me how he comes from a proud Latino warrior culture. And I had to tolerate this for like 10 minutes. And I'm like, dude, all right. And he's like, my, he's like my, my cousin Chewy, my, my primo, this. And I'm like, oh my Lord, bro. We've known each other for a long time. So I know these people, right? And they're not these like tough guys that he pretends. And I'm like, dude, you're 
family, like his entire family categorically, came from the, from the country that they hail from because they were being persecuted by the cartels. In other words, right, not, like, not specifically, but the cartels ran through his country and took over, right? And all the men that were supposed to go there and protect the country and fight, they all ran. They all ran. And now these people are telling me how tough they are. And it's like, dude, you fucking ran from the cartel. How are you going to tell me you're tough? How am I going to ever be intimidated by someone that ran and didn't protect their own country? It's not in my it's not in my in my ethos to take that shit seriously. It's the same thing with the Samoans. How are you going to fucking pretend that you're this group of tough guys when you look the way you look, man? Enough, bro. Enough. It's like you have people out there being like, oh, Umaga would have killed Lashley. Lashley would have murdered Umaga. Are you kidding me? You know, like in these fucking pr pretend bullshit. Now, I know Haku is not Samoan. He's Tongan. So this video is not about him. But I'm fucking sick and tired of hearing about how Haku ripped a man's jaw with one finger and then he used the other finger to tear the heart out of someone's chest. Fuck out of here. This is like carny nonsense. Sure, I'm sure Haku was a, was, a, was a tough guy. But the way they talk about him, they're like, this guy would murder Brock Lesnar. No, he wouldn't, motherfucks. No, he wouldn't. Brock Lesnar would would destroy him in five seconds. Lashley would destroy him in five seconds. Matt Morgan would destroy him in five seconds. Haku was like a regular sized dude. Okay, he was a tough guy. Big deal. Big fucking deal. We saw we saw what the level of tough guy is in WWE. Brawl for all, right? All the tough guys got their asses beat by Bart Gunn, who's a Golden Gloves champion, which isn't even that high of a level. He whooped their asses, motherfucks. Oh, they're all Dr. Death. Nobody's tougher than him. He whooped his ass. Oh, Godfather. Nobody's tougher than him. He whooped his ass. Savio Vega. Nobody can touch him. He whooped his ass. You know what I'm saying? And then they had Bart Gunn fight Butterbean, who knocked him out like he was a child. Like, Butterbean, if Butterbean, motherfucks, went to Haku, he would end Haku's life in three seconds. You know, enough of these pretending and entitlement, motherfucks. So there you go, mini rat inside of a rat, cucks. Reason number four, decide. Now you got the hater feelings type of way. Reason four, despite being almost exclusively jobbers, they are presented as being wrestling royalty. I've never seen anything like this since the Rhodes family. You know what I mean? The Rhodes family, historical jobbers. Like, it's not like Dusty Rhodes is the Undertaker, motherfucks. Dusty Rhodes is closer to, like, fucking Al Snow than he is to the Undertaker, but he's leveraged that and turned himself into a legend. Goldust is a, is a lower-card wrestler historically. Yes, he had a push here and there, but he was a lower-card nobody. The vast majority, like 95% of Goldust's career is him being a jobber. Cody Rhodes, 95% of his career is him being a jobber, right? And it's like wrestling has more than one royal family, and it's them and the Annoys. Wrestling has only one relevant royal family, and that's the McMahons, cucks. That's the McMahons. Reason number five, their gimmicks largely are the same. They have two gimmicks. One gimmick is they're Samoans, and the other gimmick is they pretend they're black guys. Those are the only two gimmicks that you get if you're a Samoan, right? You just get these, like... And then, you know, maybe some variant thereof, right? They're either like, yeah, dog, what up, ooze? First of all, why are you talking like that? You're from Florida, right? You're not black, right? And you're not poor. That's the way that a lot of poor people talk. And I know it's not just black people. It's poor white people too, poor Asians. They all talk like that. But these are like, guys, which is it, motherfucks? Are you wrestling royalty or are you broke-ass motherfuckers? Which is it? Tell me now, cuckolds. Now, with that being said, um, that is really stupid. Reason number six, there is no group that are given more false accolades than Samoans. Like this entire group of Samoan wrestlers, you have to like pretty much just accept that they're better than you when the match starts, right? They just get all these false accolades. They all look like shit. Like it's like if, if you look at like Umaga, if you think there's any way in, 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 in God's green earth that someone like Umaga is going to beat up like Big Boss Man, like, you're fucking lost your mind. Umaga's like 6'1 and fat. And you have like, you put him next to like Matt Morgan and people are like, oh shit, yeah, the Samoan's better. No, he's not. Why is he better? Because he's Samoan? Fuck out of here with that bullshit. Reason number seven. They're always talking about Samoa, but also hate to be stereotyped. Well, which is it, motherfucks? Do you want to be proud Samoans or do you not want to be stereotyped? Like, Roman Reigns, I will give credit where credit's due. Roman Reigns is awesome because he is taking on the mantle of the Samoan. Roman Reigns is the first ever world champion that is being presented as an Asian, 
right? Because we've had others, not Batista, right? But he was never presented as an Asian. We've had The Rock, who's Samoan as well, but he's never he's never presented as an Asian. The Rock is always presented as being The Rock, right? Same thing with Batista. Same thing with Cena. A lot of main eventers are just presented as being who they are, right? Even if you look at like, I don't know, Edge, right? Like Edge was never really presented as a Canadian, right? He was just Edge. You know what I mean? But uh, Roman Reigns is doing the right thing. And he's like, all right, I'm a Samoan, but I'm not a fucking cannibal. I'm not a savage, right? They have a culture. They have a history. And he's the only one who's not exploiting that shit and, be, and basically being, being retarded. You know, it's like, you're like, oh, here's Umaga. He's like this retard from Samoa. We found him in the background, in the back, hanging out. Now he's a wrestler. What? How did this guy become a wrestler? Why did you hire this monster? Right? It doesn't make any sense, motherfucks. You have to have things make sense. Reason number seven. Uh, sorry, reason number eight. They think they're black, motherfucks. I don't care how everyone feels about this. This is a reality. If you don't want to accept it, then don't accept it. But the reality is that there's a lot of minority cultures in America that pretty much don't like their own culture, and they adopt the culture of black people. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Some of them also adopt the culture of white people. It is what it is. But how about be yourselves? You know what I'm saying? Why in the blue hell, like... Why do Samoans talk this way? I've made this point before, but when I was in law school, I used to hang around this hookah bar. A lot of Indian kids went there, right? And these were like first generation Indian kids. And a lot of them were like, I guess they were ashamed to be Indians because they were, they, like, you, you think they were the Usos. They're like, yeah, dog, what up, man? And I'm like, this doesn't fit you at all because like, I know that you have no reason to talk this way other than you want to emulate someone that talks this way because you didn't grow up in an area where people talk this way. They grew up in like fucking like Edison, New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a hard, uh, New Jersey's not a hard place to, to grow up in, at least most of it. You know what I'm saying? They're not these guys from like the hood, but they want to be for some reason. It's a very weird phenomenon. I get it. When you're a child, you know, you want to be cool and that's what's cool. But when you're an adult, you fucking grow out of that shit. Usos and Rikishi and shit like that. It's fucking goofy, motherfucks. Um, Reason number nine, Samoans aren't particularly tough, as we've established, but their gimmick always is that they are. Like, they're always, like, you know, the hard-headed Samoan. Says who, motherfucks? Why, did, why does Jacob Fatu get to no-sell a superkick, but Kevin Owens can't? Doesn't make any sense to me. I don't like it. Uh, reason number ten, they all do the Samoan drop, which is fine. Actually, this one... I mean, it's still a reason because it's on the list, but I get it. It's a Samoan drop. Why wouldn't they do it? You know, that's their, it's like their namesake. Uh, reason number 11, they all do some variant of the ass to the face, right? You have the stink face. You got like the ramming ass to the head that the Usos and Umaga do, etc. Reason number 12, they all do a top rope splash. This is the Samoan finisher. The, reason number 13, they all do a super kick. Reason number 14, everything I just said, also known as a Samoan moveset, sucks ass, motherfuckers. It sucks. Reason number 15, the bloodline sucks. It was cool when Roman Reigns did it, but now they suck. Uh, reason number 16, uh, this is almost like, almost like it's a reason, but it's also, you know, an explanation. Reason number 16, they have no reason to innovate because they all have the same career. Every Samoan ever has the same career. You know, like, you don't think that Jacob Fatu is going to have a different career than Umaga, do you? You don't think that Solo is going to have a different career than Umaga. They're all going to be like this mid-carder, and then they're going to go away. That's what's going to happen, right? Except for, of course, Roman Reigns and, you know, The Rock, which, again, we've established, are not presented traditionally like the Samoan wrestlers. Um, but this is not a slight against the Samoans. This is a reason why they suck, but it's not a slight against them, because why would they innovate, right? You can get, like, a nice, cushy job doing the Samoan drop. You can be Tamina, you know? It's pretty good, pretty good work, if you ask me. It's just some woman who is out there, and she's basically like, you know, doing her three moves, and every year she gets a paycheck. Okay? Pretty nice. You know what I'm saying? Reason number 17. They have never done anything beyond being Samoan to any level of success, right? Their success only comes from being Samoans. You know what I'm saying? Like, they tried. They tried to do this with, with some other wrestlers, right? They tried to, like, you know... Package the Usos as like these normal dudes. Didn't work. They started, they had to do the haka, you know, and go like, and they have to do all that shit, right? It never works for them. Like, uh, Umaga, before he was Umaga, he was Jamal. Jamal and Rosie. Why did they name Jamal and Rosie? Right? And they were dressed like these two, like gangsters. They were Samoans, right? All right, fine. That's, in my opinion, a bit more compelling than Umaga, but sure, 
but it didn't work, right? It never works. The only thing that works for Samoan wrestlers is just being Samoan wrestlers. They're just like, oh, I'm Samoan. That's my thing. That's my gimmick. And therefore, they don't have any gimmicks. Uh, reason number 18. They are almost never charismatic. They're usually boring. I think this also stems from the fact that they have guaranteed jobs and they don't need to be charismatic because no one has been already, right? Like, Umaga wasn't charismatic. Oh, I don't have to be charismatic. I can just be a wrestler and be in the Hall of Fame. Sounds good, you know what I'm saying? Now, obviously, again, The Rock is a different level. The Rock the Rock is like the best wrestler of all time, motherfucker. So they also have that on their side. I can't really like, I can't really hate on them for that. But anyways, reason number 19. They almost never know how to cut a promo. I don't think I've ever heard a Samoan cut a good promo in my life, except for The Rock. I don't think it's ever happened. Uh, maybe that Roman Reigns promo that he cut on uh, Cody Rhodes, that was pretty nice. But, you know, obviously those are the outliers. Um, the vast majority of the promos they do cut are shit, and typically they don't even cut them. Reason number 20. They are often overweight and or out of shape, motherfucks. This is inexcusable. Like, they're all fat, but they're not even, like, intimidating fat. There's, like, you know, like... I'll give you a great example. Umaga is a great example of this. You know, I, I like Umaga. I, I always did because, like, I thought the someone was, like, I've, I've said it before. The someone with Spike's, like, the greatest finisher of all time, maybe. Um, but Umaga was, like, this guy who, like, clearly is not strong. Like, he's never lifted a weight in his life. He has, like, no muscle. He's just a fat dude, right? And it's, like, this guy is presented as a threat to, like, Triple H. Are you kidding me? Like, what are you talking about? Uh, reason number 21, a personal favorite. They are seldom that big. They're not big dudes. They're all like 6'1". You know what I mean? There's no like... I mean, there are exceptions, of course, but typically they're like normal-sized dudes, right? But, they, but they're but they booked like they're these super heavyweights. Like, why is Umaga a super heavyweight? For what reason? You know what I mean? He's just a dude. He's like 6'1". Who cares? You know, like Randy Orton would, would, would whoop his ass. You know? But whatever. What can I say? Reason 22. They are booked unrealistically. Another personal favorite. I don't understand what the logic is that all of a sudden Jamal went back and came back as Umaga. And then we have to acknowledge that the Usos are the nephews of Umaga. Well, why did their uncle act like a savage? Doesn't make any sense. Why are they not acting like him? Kind of weird, isn't it? Right? It's unrealistic and it's hacky, motherfucks. Reason number 23. They are retroactively viewed as legends despite being jobbers. It's really that simple. They're largely jobbers when they're around, but then a few years go by and they 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 are treated like they're these legendary wrestlers. Like Rikishi is a great example. Rikishi was a jobber. He was he didn't do anything. He, he wasn't like his one push failed completely. But they act like he was like this this legend. He's not a legend. Um and of course, reason number uh 24. They're always screaming or making weird faces. This is a very strange thing. I don't know why they do this. They're always screaming and making faces. Like Jacob Fatu like gets kicked in the face and he's like, Rawr! and he kicks the other guy. It's like, stop acting this way. Seriously, just stop. And finally, he said 25, there is no consistency in them, right? One member of the Anoa'i family, I'm using them as an example, might be a savage. The next one might be an intellectual. The next one might be an Uso. The next one might be an Umaga, right? There's no consistency. Like who knows what the next like, a Noi family member will be. I mean, they'll probably be, like, just like the Usos, but you get my point. You get my drift, motherfuckers. Now, I say this list with love. I really do mean it. I am not a fool. I understand how important the Samoans are to wrestling, right? I know, and I even know people that have gone to the Wild Samoans school. And my condolences to the family of Sika, to the Noi family, I suppose. But... I say this with love and respect because the Samoan wrestlers can do more. They can do more. They obviously learn the fundamentals pretty well. What bothers me is the complacency in Samoan wrestlers. They don't want to teach them new moves. They've gotten too comfortable, right? Hopefully this will change now that Roman Reigns is the world champion but and one of the goats. But you understand what I'm getting at. There's no reason... Why these wrestlers need to be jobbers. They can do more. Unlike other lists, virtually every reason on this list can be easily fixed by just not doing it. By just acting normal. Is it too much to ask for? To have a Samoan, like a Roman Reigns, who comes out and doesn't say dumb shit. You know, suffering succotash aside, he's like, yeah, dog. And like, 
there was one, I forget what it was. There was one where like he almost drops the <laughs> the N-word, right? That would not go over well because they're not even like remotely black, right? And also it's a PG show. Even if they were black, they wouldn't say it. How about get someone who knows how to be a normal person? Like these Samoans, like can you imagine what it's like to hang out with these people? They must be like, yeah, dog. What's up? Like, how, how, do they, how are they not embarrassed? You know what I'm saying? How are they not embarrassed to talk that way despite, you know, having like a tangible culture that does not talk that way? How? I, I've never understood this. Like, I'm not saying that anybody should behave in any, any any type of way. Do what you want. But how are you not embarrassed? How are you not embarrassed when you're literally pretending to be something you're not? I don't understand at all. So once they get past that, I think the sky's the limit. They, they are obviously athletic, like the Hanoi family, right? Like, th that's what The Rock captured. The Rock was the first one and the only one who didn't come out there and say, Yeah, dog. What up, thug? Yeah, oos. No, he didn't. He came out there with a personality. So that's what I got to say about that, Samoans. Do it for you, cucks. Do it for you. Lest you be treated the same way you've been treated this whole time. As jobbers. That are then given some, some you know, bullshit meritorious award in the end. Don't do that. Be better. Everyone, too. Not just the Samoans. Cucks.